five, four, three, two, one, sick. sick. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TTV Brickfeed Podcast. I'm Jonathan. I'm Vardaran. I'm Mesa. I'm LJ. And I'm Purple. And welcome to episode 33. Mardi Gras. There you go. Thank you. How's it going, everybody? I'm dying inside. <laughs> wow, that was really depressing. <laughs> Is it because you're $50 poor? It should be. No, it's nothing poor. to do with that. It's because we just did like a two and a half hour live stream yeah, and I'm really a- tired. <laughs> Oh, come on. You weren't I mean, the it's one not... on camera. I was mean, so? a few minutes ago. I mean, it's ago. not like <laughs> a bad thing. I'm just really tired from it. I was I was really, really happy with that live stream. That was a good live stream. Yeah. Go. The part I wasn't there for, I Wait, watched I had that, on the go, and it worked well. Wow. You guys did good. Well, that's good. I wish you were there uh, talking <laughs> there was, the There was this I one was... guy in the chat, who like because we did Q&A during the chat, and he, he, there was this one dude who asked us stuff like about a game where we'd play like Halo on the PC for game nights, and he asked it like seven times, and I kept answering him in chat, but it seemed like he only wanted you guys to answer it. Wow. Never noticed he probably it. probably didn't wow. even recognize my name like, as being Meso. He didn't recognize <laughs> the TTV Meso? I guess not, but I liked the Q&A with the fans. It was fun. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Mess is a dork, who cares? Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's a really good live stream. I'm glad we did it. Mm -hmm. Yay. And now, now Purple, if you draw me, you have to draw me with a beard, so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It will be great and stuff. So what are we doing today? (laughs) (laughs) Today we're going to be talking about... What are we doing today? What do you think we're doing? No, I mean, like, give us some direction. Basically. What's going on? Well, I mean, basically, number one, anyone get anything like it really? No. Yes. No. I actually did. What did you Whoa. get? Me too. Okay. Whoa, what? What did you get? I got Stormer XL from Hero Factory. <laughs> Why? That's <sounds> terrible. <laughs> it was a gift from oh. my good old buddy LJ. <laughs> yeah. LJ, you kind of got him a better set. <laughs> wow. What? Listen, um, I'm in it to complete my HF collection, yo. And he said I get his help for. <laughs> How much did that cost you? Isn't that like a really expensive set right now? Hey. Odd question. I Let's know. not talk about the price of gifts. <laughs> On the flip side, <laughs> yeah, I got a Lego set from my good buddy O'Pal, Meso. Hey. And um, I don't remember the exact name, but it's I think it's Lloyd's Energy Dragon. Yeah, the green Ooh. energy dragon. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So, thank you, Meso. No problem. That is pretty I cool. Tried. Energy Dragon's a great set. I love that I set. Remember. I was at your place, Var, when you built it. Oh, yeah. You were yep. wearing it. I was. It just seems like, I remember the days when the Ninjago dragons were trash, and nowadays they're like, they're all at least decent, and some are just fantastic, so. It was a good upgrade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, there you go. Awesome. Speaking well. of Ninjago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I was just about to get into that, but you're doing a good job. Um, basically, speaking of Ninjago, we got the trailer for Hands of Time. Um, that's basically which was, the biggest thing this week. That's basically, this week was a really slow week when it comes to news, actually. We haven't had a week this slow in quite a while, but uh, basically, yeah, we are in the mid-season where, like, everyone already kind of knows all the sets are coming out and stuff, just, yeah. like, kind of getting there to Christmas and then going past there. Uh, Ninjago Season 7, The Hands of Time, or I guess Season 8, depending on who you ask. It was a very um, <laughs> intense trailer, to put it in a way of speaking. It was. Yeah, it had quite a bit of a finality to it, almost, where it's like, it definitely feels like they're trying to make this the uh, the big uh, end of the show. Yeah. It better not be. Almost like kind of uh, teases Wu, like maybe potentially dying or something, or some big last revelation right. that he never quite told the ninja. For some unknown reason. Of course. Or something. Maybe, yeah. like, maybe his dad went evil. Maybe the first Minjutsu Master is, like, evil now and they have to beat Kimo God. Kimo is evil. <laughs> I was like, Wu comes to the ninjas, like, I have something to tell you, nin- you were not the first ninja. <laughs> you were not the first everything. ninja. You already kind of pulled that. <laughs> it's like, they already kind of pulled that because they're focusing a bit on uh, Nia and uh, Kai's parents. Yeah. And they, apparently, they were not the first master of fire and water. The parents were, so. <laughs> Wu keeps too many secrets. Yep. He keeps far too many. So, I don't know. It yeah, seems like. like- I, I can. I can understand if he, like, keeps the secret to protect the other ninja, but, like, sometimes it just it kind of feels annoying how he has, like, this super dark secret that'll ultimately affect, like, the entire plot of this one season. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's, a little, right. it's a little silly. This one convenient pupil Moro who he never told anybody about <laughs> until he came back as a ghost. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's just one of those things. It's a yeah. trope. Although that one, I could you... understand if you, like, didn't want to tell his students that, like, one of his previous students died, but, like, does Wu actually know that he died, or what? I don't know. Not that, that I recall, mm-hmm. no. It's pretty sketch. But... I don't know, Ninjago's got some really weird oddities like that all yeah, the time, Yeah, they though. really do. Either way, it looks like a cool season. My my hopes and concerns about it don't really extend past the season itself. It's mainly just, like, I fear that it'll be the end point for the show. The season it, itself looks like it's going to be just as good as any other season. So it, it felt, the trailer felt very finale-ish. I got vibes, the same vibes I got when we watched the final two episodes of The Journey to One, the trailer for those. You mean it your brain very, melting mm-hmm. under the weight of all the plot holes? <laughs> Well, okay, fair. not not the ending, but the the trailer for the ending. It felt very final. Like there's no way they can postpone the ending. Yeah, and I kind of got the same inevitable. vibe here. Okay, let me ask you guys this: Do you think there will be a reboot of the show? I yes. feel like it's something that they'd at least yeah. consider. I feel like well, it's actually, something they basically have to do. So long as they keep making Ninjago an action theme, they can't rely on movies and sequels every three years. If they're even going to make a sequel to the Lego Ninjago movie, they need to have some kind of consistent media presence. So they might remake the show in the movie graphic style, maybe? Um, I don't know. I don't know quite about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel know. like that'd be kind mm-hmm. of expensive. I hope they yeah, just I leave it like... alone, but I really don't mm-hmm. see them having two continuities at once. No. They're not. I, on, on, if if the movie is a success, I do not think they're going to continue with the show. I think they're going to do a, a sequel to the movie. If it's really, really good, if it's not good, then I don't know what they'll do. Rip Ninjago. But I mean, don't you, like? Do you think they'll be able to have some sort of TV presence, even if the movie does really well? Like what? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I mean it's like, possible, but I doubt it. I mean, like they could have a, like a an inner like kind of like Transformers, you know, like they have Transformers yeah. cartoons and Transformers movies. So. Yeah, but Transformers is built around different continualities and like different alternate universes and stuff. That That's don't the first time I've ever heard that word being used that way. Continuums? Cont- continuities. Continuity, I think, is a- continuities. I don't know, right. whatever. I, 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 I don't really care. <laughs> you you understand what I mean? Yes. Though. It, like it, it's built around these different like continuities where it's it's just like there's there's this branch of Transformers and this branch of Transformers Ninjago and they really not. have nothing to do with each other other than the name Transformers and the characters that have the same name right, right. are completely different. Yeah, Ninjago's never so, been that way. Yeah, Ninjago's never been that way. Most things aren't that way. Transformers is very unique in that in that aspect, so I don't know if it would really work for that. Well, I mean, like, I guess, like, the big thing is right now, Lego does not have a lot of experience being a, a movie franchise company you know what i'm saying like they so far they've only done one hit movie that was a really big hit that was amazingly good the lego movie and, and it's gonna uh, take immediately, them, what, like four years to make the sequel to it so. <laughs> basically yeah i know like right now they're doing the two films in between they're doing like a batman and like an injago which is going to launch next year and then in 2019 i feel they're going to do uh i think they're going to do the lego movie too i believe so um, and like you know with different people we really don't know uh, who's a you know who's writing the script again for this one. I forget like the Phil Lord and Chris Miller are doing a new script. I just forget if it's for the Batman movie or not. Um, I I can't recall off the top of my head. It's okay. I'll, I'll IMDb it. But like, long story short, like they are going to be moving to a new creative team at some point because I don't think anyone really expected the Lego Movie to be as popular as it was. I definitely you know, I, I, I didn't. I didn't expect it to skyrocket ahead. You know, it's gone yeah. quite well. Yeah. My concern is mainly just, um, like, Ninjago's, it's the last vestige, the last successful, I guess it's not true because of Nexo Knights, but Ninjago has a far bigger media presence and beloved fan base than Nexo Knights has. It's a quality, it's the next generation's Bionicle, basically, the modern day generations. And I don't see Lego being able to produce enough movies to keep it relevant. They need to have a TV show of some kind. I think so too. Like mini uh, episodes or something like they used to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can. I guess I see that. But there, I mean, there's also animated movies that have their own TV show sometimes too. Like How to Train Your Dragon got its own TV show and everything. This is true. In between its continuality. So I mean, it's it's certainly possible. I just I don't know. Like I, I feel like at some point they've got. To me, the show itself is starting to like get to a point where it does feel like it's time to reach its conclusion. You know, it's it's yeah. it's run on long enough to where it feels like. 
eventually you're going to have to They've run covered something the, to basically say. the well, entire okay. gambit, all the ninjas' backstories at this point have been fully explored, you know? I, yeah. I think, like, part of the thing that I would say for a reboot, and I can understand coming from creator's perspective, they... Linjago was never meant to go beyond three years from the beginning. So that meant that when they created the story, they created three years worth of story with the ability to make some later stuff down the line. Well, then turns out Ninjago is hugely popular. So then they keep doing adding stuff. But like you can definitely tell each new season is less of like, oh, we planned this all out from the beginning, like Avatar The Last Airbender or something. Yes. And a bit more like, oh, hey, uh, you guys got a Never Year in you? And you're like, ah, uh, sure, I guess we could add that since we had this apprentice. It's very evident they back. have not planned out everything from the beginning, and I got that right, feeling I, I, all the way back from Tournament of Elements, where they introduced the concept of the elemental masters. Everybody had elemental power within them all along. That was where I knew, okay, they kind of had to rewrite this well, from I the mean, ground like, yeah. up to be more contradicted the golden weapons obviously it's like they didn't exactly. expect it to be as like this evergreen theme so for me i would say as a, like as someone who has written stuff beforehand i would like the opportunity to go back and then create a new story that i know is going to last longer than three years i know it's not going to have an expiration date and set that whole world up again make it more consistent we talk about inconsistencies in ninjago all the time and i do believe it's because it's not because the writers are bad they're very great writers but like they are like pressed for time and they have to come up with these conflicts and then it turns out that hey you know um we like this is the best we can come up with without knowing if the show is going to be renewed year after year after of year course, nobody expected yeah. yeah nobody expected ninjago to be as popular as it uh as it right they up, can't yeah. they actually canceled it they were like all right it's run its course and everyone's like no bring it back and they're like oh, oh okay <laughs> sure. I mean, at that same time i we we're making this assumption and sure it's and and we're we're just kind of guessing we should talk to yes. anderson tommy anderson well it's not like he's gonna we be should... able to share any info on whether it's right. gonna continue or not but <laughs> yeah well, we, I mean, we, we should be, be able to talk we should at, have like a, another talk with him especially once we're caught up of next we night which we start talking about him uh, on i so, tommy anderson if you're listening you're welcome anytime <laughs> any place anywhere We'll fight you. I mean, we'll <laughs> talk to you. Anywhere? Really? <laughs> anywhere, including that one park well, in Utah. I mean, we didn't Utah meet him in New York, so. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to go to the park in Utah and just have a nice dinner while hobos throw ice in the air. <laughs> Tommy Anderson is one of the best people, like, one of the best uh, experiences I've had talking to a like, employee. Uh, we had a great time at New York Comic Con. Would love to talk with him again about all the stuff we're doing, especially now that, like, we, as a, like, a whole group, are super into now in Ninjago and, like, looking into getting to further on with next nights and we all that stuff that, that he's show. working with they're about to start yeah. the next season they're about to start the we should we should season. legitimately get together this is the time and finish to get it. caught up let's let's do it <laughs> and then we can it. start the second season and start doing coverages of that uh exactly we That's we do thinking. have talks about doing a a show that covers like this the tv shows from lego as they come out so that yeah. those coverages yeah. will be coming back as soon as the show comes back definitely for ninjago hands of time and hopefully for next next few nights we're able to get well, that done don't know if i'm going to be getting caught up anytime soon that's fine but i won't be watching the whole show again so yeah. right that is there true. we go well, the thing stay with hands tuned of time, people i guess like my main concern for the season in particular not talking about the future of the theme is just like how they handle the whole time aspect of course we've spoken about it to death and it seems as if I, don't, I, I can't get a good v grasp on what exactly the story is going to be because the trailer they showed off, the Vermilion, were noticeably absent from mm -hmm. it. The snake well, creatures. Well, the trailer, good, good point. the trailer wasn't really a trailer. It was more of a teaser. And it, yeah. it was really yeah. a whole lot of nothing. You're right. It's got melodrama it really and spades was. It told us and not nothing. much more. So. It, it was just kind of a, a drop of water for a thirsty onlooker. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> funny because... If this was a Marvel movie, I would be like, finally, or like a Star Wars movie, I'm like, great, you know, I don't want to know what the thing's about, I just want to have a, like a feel for the movie, it doesn't, the trailers don't show anything anymore. Exactly. But for Ninjago, I'm the opposite, I'm like, I want you to tell us as much as you can about what's coming up for the next season. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting for me, like, you know, how much I value that in like any other thing, but like with Ninjago, I'm like, no, 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 tell me more. I think it's because we have just, a discussion yeah. podcast, we need stuff to discuss. <laughs> That's true. And right. like we had, we got a brand new trailer that came out. I want to talk about it, but I can't really figure out what to say other than there was melodrama and Wu's keeping secrets. Wu so, was flying. I, I do. Backwards. Yeah, he was. I do he want to know backwards. like exactly what's going on with that, and uh, we won't know until we watch the movie what's going to be going on with the movie continuity as well. Really, uh, I mean, the only thing that's basically confirmed is that it involves time to some regard, but we already knew that. Yeah, so. we, we yeah. and we don't know how because I yeah, still it's think called that the hands of time. So surprise, I still don't think yeah. that. Um. <clears throat> they're gonna go back in time. I, I still think they're retconning the whole parents thing, but that's 
personally, I mean, why just not both? I, I still yeah. say they're retconning it, but it's hard to say they're not going to go back I, in time. They're, they're point. signs pointing both directions, so. <laughs> yeah, we got those. I don't think we ever spoke about the set descriptions that came out, because they were released through a semi-questionable source, but I think they did end up being legitimate, with the fact that the weapons mm-hmm. are going to like be able to control the flow of time back and forward and stop and... Right. Oh, we did talk about stuff. it. We did talk about it uh, briefly. Um, I on can't the, imagine on the podcast that beforehand. coming out in any way that doesn't make them super overpowered. Okay, I don't that, know they have to capitalize mm. on that. Like honestly, time if jitsu. that is the case and they can control time, think of all the amazing cinematography and, yes. and choreography they can do with that. It'd be like tracer, yeah, going back that in would be time. Cool. It well, I mean, would be so I mean, cool. We did see a scene like that in a major movie that came out recently, where like that, like they had an element of time travel in it, and that was really cool to to see on screen. Okay, yeah. hmm. I don't wanna, I don't want to spoil I don't want to spoil it because some people haven't seen it. So. I don't know what you're talking about so far. All right, I'll, it's okay. I'll, I'll type it. In. Everyone who's seen it knows what I'm talking about. All right. I have like very limited memory I of the no trailer. What you're about. I have no idea oh, what yeah. you're talking about either. I get it now. Okay. I'm dumb. Still don't get it. <laughs> Just check, just check the chat. <laughs> Good grief. Oh. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen that movie, so I don't get it. <laughs> no, fair enough. I forgot you haven't seen that movie. Um, It, it has been a while. Because uh, we all saw, like, Rogue One and stuff. We haven't kept up with the other, other Let's things. Let's move on. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, so um, speaking of things that are going on within the uh, Ninjago uh, and the movie space, we did actually get these posters for the new Lego Batman movie that's coming out. Um, And mostly, like... The posters really don't show anything new. They're just kind of cool to look at, but they are very detailed and stuff, and uh, they're very high quality renders. So I thought I should share them with you guys. Um, wow! Batman, Robin, Batgirl, Joker, Harley Quinn, and Alfred are all featured here. Um, Man, dude, they're so textured. Harley, textured. Now the thing about Harley, I was not like I knew Harley's going to be in the movie, but and she didn't seem to take focus in the trailers or anything. I thought she would just kind of be like a bit character in the background, but she's been, she's being promoted pretty heavily here. Um, it's probably she's, being she's like iconic or whatever. Yeah. Because of suicide squad. Yeah. Jenny Slate. Definitely because of suicide squad. Jenny Slate sure. is a, a doing it. Harley Quinn is interesting because she's one of the, the biggest, I feel like Halloween costumes this year. You know, I feel like almost every Halloween party I went to had someone dressed up as Harley Quinn, even if they didn't see the movie or didn't like the movie, they just kind of liked her design. Oh my gosh! So, kick! I feel like these things have more texture than the actual kick. Butler, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Uh, this movie, I swear. One of the things that I really do enjoy again with these renders is like how much detail they put into like the nicks and the scratches, especially on Robin. Look at Robin's hair. There's so many scratches and like little nicks yeah. and dents in it. And you also, know? like the weird like chipping stuff in Harley Quinn's paint. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Really, uh, really cool. Mm-hmm. Very uh, detailed. Batman's Batman's cape is also very detailed, very textured. I noticed so. they did change the way the capes are for some of the Lego minifigure capes. Because it's actually like that in the figure. They changed it to like more of a cloth kind of a thing, whereas before it was more of a very firm, rigid, papery kind of a cloth. Yeah, papery kind of a... <laughs> I don't even know how to, yeah. to talk, like, to describe it. But yeah, it was very, like, papery. Um, yeah. And now it's definitely more of a cloth uh, aesthetic. It's those subtle improvements Material. they make over the years that really do like add some a little bit of variety to sets that otherwise wouldn't. Got a minor update. Remember we were talking about the Penguin Arctic Roller and that set and we were wondering how much it was going to cost? Well, I found uh, the, I think it was on the UK version of Lego Shop, the Penguin Arctic Roller got put up for pre-order and then it was taken down, but I was able to view the cached cache webpage of the uh, the set on lego.com and it's priced at 39 uh what am i saying 29.99 euros or pounds whatever it is on like how they view the uk currency and based on how other licensed products are priced the translation the currency what am i trying to say the ratio is to the point where it'll be 29.99 in us is basically what i'm getting at yep uh brick set actually here i'll post this article but to <laughs> reviewed it uh the uh reviewer let me scroll up to find his name uh it was by hugh uh, wow. and he said that he was been told that it will be uh 29.99 euros and 29.99 us dollars to which, which i is, gotta uh, say that is absolutely fantastic for that model i am like more than down. yeah for that model That's i'm impressive. paying 30 dollars this went from uh like a maybe to a must buy for what, me what were our yeah, bets definitely i forget which i think i, I said get. like 40 i think, I I think put we my said bet 40 50 i said i think i said 40 myself yeah. I, I know i said this is a cool 50. set this is really really cool 
So, so let me ask you this. Do you think has, the Euro... When does this come out? Do we know? Uh, the first. It's officially out the first. First, okay. But I think you can order some of these sets from Lego Shop at home or find them on... Batman's face without the cow. Yeah. Oh, oh my on gosh. Earth. What on I, earth? I know why they have to do that, but it bothers me every time I see the, yeah. the helmet it looks off. Like... Why do they even bother giving him a normal face at all, then? Now, if you look at, like, okay, if you look at the uh, expression, though, like, so the first one has the normal Batman phase where he's just kind of stoic. But then the uh-huh. other one has the eyes. If you look at the eyes, the eyes well, are actually doing expression. Eyes, but... Right, he, but the Batman eyes, eyes in particular, yeah, hit the white eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. Right. So um, that the fact that they're doing expressions of those now, it's kind of interesting to me. I would not have pegged that beforehand. Well, thank you, Batman movie, for giving us bad expressions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bat expressions. This minifigure looks really, really cool. And I, I mean, I've never had a Batman minifigure, so I don't know if it's any like different than them they are normally. But I really like it. So uh, it is. It is not very different. I feel like they wanted to go for a classic look with that. Um, yeah, I'm sure that makes sense. The belt is the newest edition here. That's really different. I think that's probably what what's standing out to me is that because it looks really three dimensional mm-hmm. with the cowl and the belt itself. Like it feels like there's more to it than just a minifig. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, like, for instance, Spider-Man feels very bare bones because it's just a print. Mm-hmm. But this one actually feels like there's a lot on him, so it is, I, I like it a it lot. It is interesting that, like, they're going for a very minimalist kind of Batman style to the point where it's like, he has no leg printing or arm printing, which is something that a lot of uh, new minifigures nowadays are coming out with. So, uh, to me, it's a little surprising that they didn't update the printing all too much on the chest and the, uh, or basically just the chest. If you look at that's basically the only place he has any printing at all. He doesn't even which, have yeah. belt printing anymore. To be fair, he has an actual belt. which that is excellent. The new piece is phenomenal. The new piece is phenomenal. And the more, the more colors it's in, the better off it gets. But with Batman, I don't really think you need to have a whole lot of printing, at least this variant of him. Nah, you don't. Not really. No, especially this variant. Uh, I feel like they did better uh, or more detailed ones for the Batman v Superman ones that came out. So I do feel like there's a difference with the movies. They should definitely try to upscale like the amount of detail. But for like this version, this iconic kind of comic booky ish version, I don't think they need it. Yeah. Um, later on, actually, one thing that really gets me is the uh, the the waistcoat uh, thing on the penguin, or like the the collar on the penguin. Oh, that yeah, is the really stuff. cool. <laughs> yeah, the like kind of fluffy like you know overcoat collar thing. Um, that is a really cool piece that I'm really excited to get. Uh, I'm he also loving has the many a, figures uh, for this movie. He also has yeah, a really cool, um, like, little umbrella. Penguin's so cute. Look, <laughs> so short. Yeah, well, it's like so grumpy. <clears throat> the only thing I have so issue with he's seven. literally grumpy stumpy. <laughs> 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 Work jokes. Um, the only issue I have with the set is that it's the penguin's car. Mm-hmm. And it should not be the penguin because we already have a set he's in that's massive, and he's a major part of that. This should have been someone else, in my yeah. But I like the opinion. design of the car. I like the colors and no, like, no, the I, I like it. it could have been colors. anyone else's car. Black mask, black. Yeah, I was just about to say black mask. It could have absolutely been black. I've said this car. before, but black mask, sh- 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 like, is a perfect person for his mask. He's a gangster, uh, like an OG gangster. Yeah, he has a cool design. Honestly, the color scheme fits him Hard more. Hard to argue with that. Honestly. I'd be down for black skull minifigure helmet. <laughs> so I, I'm totally like, if I had to choose. And again, there's a list I have of top ten Batman minifigures that are not that haven't been minifigures yet that I'd like to see in this wave or done in the style. Good luck releasing a top ten with that title. Oh, well, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll figure it out. Top ten Batman minifigures that aren't minifigures. No, no, no. Or whatever. Top Something ten stupid. missed Batman minifigs. Missed minifigures. Yeah, there you go. So another thing that Brickset has, Brickset's done a review of the Nexo Knight battle suit for Lambs. I don't know how they got Ooh, this yeah. set so early, but they did. Well, they're uh, coming out in stores. Fair enough. I have not seen any of them, but I want to get my hands on these mechs like yesterday. Because I firmly believe, after <laughs> looking at this review, that they are our future. It may take a good number of years, but we're going to get there eventually. And I see the groundwork being laid here, and it's it's pretty impressive. Mo- notably the torso. How that's you, done. you think we're going to get a Bionicle G3 in this stuff? Maybe not Bionicle G3, <laughs> but I do think that eventually, maybe not the next construction theme, but eventually there will be a full theme of Mixel mechs. Just no, I mean, like, imagine, yeah. on, imagine you have... Imagine you have like a bunch of robots and they're able to do the fire, the elemental powers thing, and then they like get in the Exotoa type suits. And then, yeah, uh, that's uh, this. Listen, you know? Lego, if you're listening, Exoforce Two. <laughs> I already see people in the comments calling it Exo Knights. Exo Knights. <laughs> this is apt that's because cool. it's they're much smaller, more compact mechs than Exoforce has. But yeah, 
Yeah, they're the future. The, the main I mean, thing that I did not realize, but actually looking at the mech, I, it makes perfect sense. They have waist articulation. Wait, huh. what? Yep. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I actually read a review on the Mr. Freeze mech that made me, Im- that kind of implied this, but seeing these poses, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, right. I really like that. I mean, that's one of my favorite things about uh, the uh, 2017 Bionicle sets is that they added that waist articulation. Yep. Yeah. And they made a way to make lower that. legs that actually allow them to bend at the knee and also the hip area. Uh, and now all they need to do to make these mechs viable is find a way to better the proportions to where they have lower arms. And, you know, they're where, not just I don't, shoulder to Where's hand. the knee? Where's the knee, actually? I don't see that. Well, it's a it's a perspective thing because I'm not looking at that whole big bottom piece as like being the foot. I'm looking at the oh. little orange thing as being the lower leg, and then that plugs into the foot, which is the roller skate. But okay, I I get I get you. Technically, okay. I guess yeah, it doesn't really. I, s- I see it as but, the foot. I I can't unsee. Yeah, that. I see it as the foot as well. But uh, sure. I mean, I, I understand, understand like, what, what I'm making is from. it can bend properly. Is what I was really right. getting at. There are some yeah, the uh, joints construction are really cool. mechs, they've made out of mixel joints that don't have that. Their bending is only to the side, and they've managed to do it in the better way here because of that new waist piece. And they've also mm-hmm. able to achieve waist articulation right out the gate, which is something that we weren't able to do in regular construction for many years, so... <laughs> well, hey. Wait, we weren't able to do it up until 2007. Exactly. I definitely see that as a knee and not a foot, but... So I'm with you there, Mesa. Whatever works. Yeah, it depends on the pose. It, it also depends yeah. on the perspective, yeah. The one I, thing that I can't get over with these mechs is the fact that their hands look a little too big. Uh, the CCBS hands look a little off-putting. And also, that shield. I don't know what the heck is up with the mech's shield, but it I don't like how the mech shields look. <laughs> it's bad. I, I, this, the color scheme for the set is just awful in general. <laughs> That's the Nexo color scheme really, for you. Just really boring. You don't like I mean, the trans orange, orange everywhere? Trans Orange is fine, and usually Nexo Knights is really good about color. If anything, that's one of my biggest compliments about that line, is that they handle color distribution and color combinations really, really well. Mm. This is just not one of those sets. Mm. It's just, it's so, it's all white with, like, this really bland, like, (laughs) gray-blue, almost, (laughs) with, like, the highlights just aren't really placed all that well. They're kind of just slapped on. And then the, the shield just completely ruins the entire scheme they have already. Yeah. Also, it's just really ugly looking. I mean, <laughs> but I'm sure there's some story relevance for it. You know, the it. shields definitely have a thing with the powers. Like, they'll be able to scan the powers. Yeah. And you, know, you can use previous Extra Knight powers to, and, like, put them on your, uh, like, It just seems like there it. could have been a better, more creative way of doing that. I'll Possibly. agree. I mean, like, I don't, I don't mind it. I think it's a kind of cool idea. I do think the execution might be, uh, might do different, but we'll, we'll see. It's how also it interesting yeah. because the wheels actually allow him to roll along. So they've also done what it took Bionicle six years to do, a roller skating construction mock. I mean, model. Wait, it's wait. G- what? Meh. Umbra, man. Oh, well, yeah. No, Umbra did that fine. <laughs> well, I say fine, but... He's not really fine. I hope this does um, it better. I mean, wait, if you want to get technical, how can it the act- Rocky, it can't roll, can it? According to the review, it can. That, yeah, the pieces oh, they use, I guess so. it's, okay. it's an axle going through a hole. It's an axle going through a hole. Okay, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Sure. I, I mean, from the sure, side, like, oh, you like are right, be. the okay. Rahi could roll, but they weren't oh, yeah, on roller skates. Yeah, even oh, still. Yeah, that's such a huge technical. Okay, I, I should have specified <laughs> I meant a humanoid, like a person. Like the Tarakaba, the build of that bottom half is essentially the exact same he- thing here in small but scale. two of them? I mean, there were two Tarakaba. Yeah, I mean, there are two Tarakaba, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant, but yes. Oh, but there's no difference. Just yeah. slap them together. Yeah, no, he's. he's here's my right. here's my difference. If I tried, if I set on like a hardwood floor, just a regular flooring, if I set these two mocks and then pushed both of them, the battle suit would roll. The Tarakava, I would have to actively push it along. That's a good point. Because of how the treads work, they work over carpet. They don't work over floor. Whereas yeah, these true. work on floor and not on carpet. So it's like it's a double edged thing. Is basically what I'm getting at. Yeah. Point being, it's neat. I like how they're doing <laughs> this. Do you yeah. do you think that like I feel like the one thing Lego should work on next because they seem to be improving all their uh, their previous parts. They should work on getting these hands figured out, like actually yes. having fingers and stuff. They should. I, they add so much personality to any creation. It's beyond like yep. you do. You don't realize how much personality they add to your mock until you have. Hands of opposable, like or not opposable thumbs, so like even like individual fingers and stuff. So I feel like Lego I, should I be working on that. I haven't had an next. issue with the CCBS hands, but seeing them on these sets, they're the weakest element. They need better hands. 
Huh. Anyhow, yeah. Here we go. Thanks for uh, thanks for that the look there. So, all right. Um, Certainly an interesting set. Definitely looks very prototype. So I'm interesting to see where they go. Right. From. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It feels like yeah. Hero Factory, like step. you know, the, 2.0. This, this is Hero Factory's yeah. first wave. Yeah. Basically. Right. Yeah. Where it's like you see where they're going. No, I'm not. The first wave I felt was just kind of like the stars. Well, the, the first second wave, wave was a test. It was a. It was um. Well, maybe not exactly a test, but it was a gradual listen. We know you aren't gonna like what's gonna happen next. Have this. Say bye bye. Well, I mean, like, I feel like with Hero Factory, the first wave, I have a lot of the sets from that wave because I ordered the bunch on Am- uh, on eBay, actually, this one time. So a lot of the, the sets are basically like the stars. They don't have any articulation in the arms or the legs. You know, they're just kind of, they're basically just stars with an added, like, chest piece and stuff. Well, and then 2.0 is when they actually start doing, like, the construction stuff. And so 2.0 is kind of like the beginning of that, like, okay, I kind of see what you're doing there. And then it gets built on later yeah, on I, by, I, I you see know, what you mean. previous Fun and stuff. Fact. Yeah. This mech has the exact same amount of arti- well, no, it has one additional point of articulation more, if you aren't counting a minifigure, than uh, an HF or star set. Oh, there you go. (coughs) That's in the waist. Nice. And for any curious people, these sets are retailing for $9.99. Which is awesome. It is very cool. Oh, which is too much, gross. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, Purple, how do you feel about these Macs? Yeah, they're okay. They're kind of basic looking, to be honest. <laughs> well, you and them have something I... kind of common, then. <laughs> oh. whoop de doo I can't deny they're rather basic looking. They're all basically clones, like, built on a template except for Axel. <laughs> but they're for they're I understand step. you're using that word properly, but I just can't, like, not hear the word basic and think, like, they're just, like, this blonde white girl who's, like... <laughs> <laughs> like she has like the the white sweater and Uggs and skinny yeah. jeans and a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> wow, exactly. <laughs> like, and a something like he would do, to be honest. Wow. Listen, I well, I, Kahi's very basic. I do I do dabble in basic things you know? here and again. Actually, you dabble in white belt culture. I, I do I do dabble. I am a connoisseur of white belt culture. He is a basic dabbler. I, I, you Constant know what? I, yes. I really I'm sorry. Wish. What did I say? Connoisseur. What's supposed to be? <laughs> Connoisseur. <laughs> Connoisseur? All right. Well, I was close. Like dinosaur, but for cons. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Don't they use that to, like, grow grass? Manure? So, you mean no. uh, fertilizer? fertilizer? <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I was, I was thinking manure. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for taking us on that trip on. for a bit. <laughs> I had one last comment. <laughs> okay, all right. I thought you could comment. picture like all five of them lined up next to each other, and I just now noticed it. Why does Aaron have an extra piece of his shield? Whoa, 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 whoa! They're all lined up next to each other. Next, next so night to each other. <laughs> M- Meso, next what are you? Uh, what are you getting at, Meso? Why? Why does Aaron have that extra piece in his shield? Because he's body. green, and, and the green characters are cool. Maybe it's a plot thing. <laughs> but it looks ugly. Maybe they're it all does. supposed to have it. I mean, okay, so I, to be fair, it looks disagree. more like a shield. I think, um, look at the bottom of Aaron's shield. Aaron's the green one. Yeah, yeah look at the bottom. Yeah. I, I, all the others. They have the connection point he, for it. It's just not there. I mean. Possibly. I, I feel it looks more like a shield. Yeah, yeah I, I honestly like do feel it's more. better. Yeah. Because it actually wait. looks like a like Knight's Kingdom shield. Do you guys remember how those looked like? Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, like this is Knight's Kingdom 3, basically. It's just perplexing how nobody else has one. Yeah, and I definitely agree with that point. Yeah, yeah it's also got like weird. the trans orange uh, uh, axe pieces coming out of it too. Yeah, he has the best shield those. by far. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, I think that's the best set because it's green. Well, I think it's I the mean, best set solely because it has like all the features of the other one plus a, a launcher plus that better shield. You know, it just like it works out. There's a lot more playability on that than the yeah. others, but. Personally, yeah. I like Axel. I think he pulls off the look <laughs> the best because the tiny head isn't a problem. But dude, the Lego sets we grew up with sucked. <laughs> Honestly, I've been looking back. Like we should talk about some of the old Lego sets at some point in time because man, we like we look back at that with nostalgia. But some of them were pretty bad. And you know what? If you're interested in seeing reviews of all the Bionicle construction sets from Generation 1, you can head right on over to this channel and see them all. <laughs> Where's Ultimate Doom? Where's that Bionicle set? About to go right down your gullet, Meso. <laughs> <laughs> Very forcefully. Uh, well, you got well, you got an Exoforce set, right? Did you, you say Nexo uh, yeah. Brick Fair. I said uh, yeah, I got yeah, my, Exoforce. I got, like, that super awesome Nexoforce set. <laughs> I said ex- I don't yeah. Know. Var got the Blade Titan. Wait. Yes, you got the Blade Titan. At yes, Brick yeah, Fair. Blade Titan. Blade Titan. So, how do you feel? Like, did you did you actually did you keep it in the box or did you build it? 
Kahi, I built it in front of you. <laughs> you I, saw I, it I physically. Even, like I remember. Well, I I wasn't sure if you bought two because at one point you even said. Eh, I think I liked it more in the box. <laughs> At one point, you were talking about keeping one of, like, something in the box. I wasn't sure if that was that one or if you bought, like, another one. Because at one point, you're like, I just want to... I yeah, I totally it. bought another one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know all the stuff you bought at Brick Fair. Anyhow, <laughs> but you did a whole long video. story short... <laughs> We did a whole video. Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't you in, know, in, it was you in that video. I did, but it wasn't in the video. You, it already was packed away. It was in that video, <laughs> it, in the it, box. It, I hadn't opened it yet. It was yet. in the video. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's, if it's still in the box, then your argument's invalid. If I no, edit the video, that is, that's why I see it's in the box. Why? <laughs> My argument is that why would I have two of them? We did a haul video. You know exactly what I got. Stay tuned for how will Kai weasel out of this? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna go look. Right, I'm gonna sure. I'm gonna go see if it was actually in the box because that. Go, go it, no, it was. It was still in the well, box. I, I remember the, the video. <laughs> just checking. I believe you, boss. All right. I just boss, <laughs> boss, okay. boss. It was in the. It was still in the box. Yeah. Yes, I did open it. Yes, okay. I did build it. Yes, Kyle, oh, you, you did you look at it. It was like, box. oh, I kind of liked it more in the box. I kind of liked it more in the box. <laughs> oh, so I'm not saying yeah, I said that. I just all right. Fire. I don't remember. it. <laughs> like the box of donuts, in which, a statement of which I do kind of agree with. I think the set itself is pretty, uh, pretty unextraordinary, and uh, it's definitely more nostalgic than anything. Do you feel like the this new wave of like having mechs and the minifigures is that better or worse than the Exo Force stuff? Well, right now, worse, I think. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I see the potential of this, and I think this uh, can certainly go places in an interesting fashion. But right now, it's just not quite there yet. It's like in the past couple of years, we've seen mechs done out of the norm like we've always had like basic system mechs you know they they come and go mm, and basic the themes like does that, i mean it's like the regular template for mechs or whatever where they have like the cockpit or whatever but in the past couple of years we've had hf invasion from below and these next knights battle suits and they've had two opposite kinds of problems the hf battle suits had to have big cockpits that had to protrude from the torso and had these giant windshields that fold down over the mechs which made them look huge and bulbous these sets have nothing. They have the <laughs> tiny minifigure head that sticks out, which makes them look ridiculous with their miniature faces. So one's too big, one's yeah. too small. They need to find some happy medium to make them look normal. Well, I mean, well, I mean, like, I feel like the, it's almost like they're not—they're not really full mechs. It's more like power armor right. is what they're going for. Right, right. Like, we we have like the Iron Man, the uh, the Hulkbuster mech. I felt yeah. was a very good sized mech where you know you're able oh, to great. have. And you know what that the, had? The it had like a little fold down top helmet mm-hmm. that but, folded right, over exactly. the really helmet. that was not a good representation of the Hulkbuster at all like um, that the set was a poor rendition eh. I thought it was okay they could have done a better job they probably could have speaking. they had a yeah they'd have been a larger uh, set I mean definitely. I think yeah they could have sure, made it could, more bulky definitely yeah you could have made it like a, a much better like uh, a bigger version of it um, but for all things considered it wasn't too bad here I'm gonna I'm gonna give yeah, you like of course, a couple if, photos yeah it wasn't the worst and it is a representation so they did they did do a good job. They did the best they could have done with that price bracket. However, considering the how cool of a set that actually was, it, it could have been bigger. It was notable. When I think of Age of Ultron, that's the scene that comes to mind. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. That was one of the standout scenes in Age of Ultron was the, uh, yeah, the Hulk yeah, Buster versus Hulk. so much. And yeah. Like yeah, it was like one of the, the best things. Anyhow, um... <laughs> I think that's about wrapping it up for uh, for this, unless anyone else has to say something. Basically, yeah, but we gotta go on at least for another five minutes. We only have the forty minute mark. <laughs> oh no, I, I still have more news. I, I mean, this, this is oh. it for next night's. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, jeez, yeah. So come <laughs> on, man, don't, don't, don't dump that. What are you here. doing? Hey, it's not time to wrap up. That's yet. what I'm saying. No, you want to leave? But no, that's what I'm quick. saying. Is that we can't wrap up yet? It's too early. Uh, well, it's a good uh, thing that uh, I was not going to say you didn't wrap, wrap up. He was just saying he was done with the talk. I mean, Real quick, yeah. Nessa, uh, are you getting bored? I'm there, sorry. I didn't mean to bore there's you. Some good news, by the way. Uh, for anyone unaware, <laughs> the uh, Lego Batman movie collectible minifigures are releasing. They are in stores. At the very least, they're in Targets. So start looking for them. They are out. Gonna go to my target. Sweet. Get those sets. Those are sets. I'm like, I'm. That's a collector. This might be my 
real foray into collecting every single one in uh, in that line because yeah. I I did some of Disney. I'm gonna totally grab a bunch of these Batman ones. Uh, additionally, um, the Batman ones. I would question you. <laughs> additionally, the Batman in the Phantom Zone poly bag is also out in stores. It has, at the very least, been found in a Target in Oklahoma. So I guess we can talk about that now. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can. Also, I real quick. Uh. Well, I want to get back to the poly bags, but I want to insert here real quick and talk about one of our sponsors, quote unquote sponsors, the TTV message boards, uh, <laughs> board TV, <laughs> board.tvchannel.com. It's a great place for you to go kind of join our community. A bunch of like-minded people who love Lego or who love other things, including the Lego upcoming Lego Batman movie. So uh, check Woo. that out. Just right, I, today we had a cool yay. thing on the message boards. LJ, what, what got released on the message boards today for any so, interested parties? If you're interested in Bionicle in any way, shape, or form, you're going to be happy to hear this. And if you really wanted to see anything from our Biocraft project many years ago, you'll be happy to hear this. We finally released the Island of Matanui in Minecraft that we had been working on for the last five years on the message boards for download, for free. You pay nothing. You don't even need them to... to <clears throat> uh, there's no paywall. You just download it. It's right on our message boards, and uh, it's all yeah. yours. It came out today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Out. Mm-hmm. Yep, the yep. Island of Matt's it's really neato and stuff, guys. You should check it out. Also, you should create a uh, an account on the message boards while you're there, because why not? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a great community. We, YOLO swag. Yeah, we're Your really insightful contributions, purple thing. Uh, I'd also like <laughs> to yep. take this Glad opportunity to uh, <laughs> thank another one of our sponsors, my sponsors actually, me, because thanks, Olja. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, sure. If, if cool. uh, the message boards are our sponsors, then I can be my own sponsor. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you can't. But Hang if on. you okay, made, you, you need to talk to my people. My sponsor's unhappy with what you're saying. I mean, like you could <laughs> talk about your parents. Your parents are kind of your sponsor. <laughs> Uh, in the same way that, like, you know, it kind of earns you money. We the message boards is part of our company, so like, exactly. Long, long story short, they do technically sponsor us in terms of money that we who get cares? from ad revenue. Yeah, who cares? Polybag. Polybag. Poly so we, the, we can finally talk about the Batman in the Phantom Zone polybag. We can also talk about this other polybag, which is the Superhero Girls one, which is less exciting, but just features Crypto the Super Dog. Yeah. Freaking finally. Less exciting for us. Um, yeah. Crypto! And also, I, I think, crypto. I'm pretty sure in this, like, DC <laughs> Superhero Girls theme that Crypt- Kryptonite is alive. Because it has a face. So Kryptonite is alive? Like, alright, check out the what? poly bag. Here, I'll, I'll link this, what? uh, this thing for you guys. What? 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 They what? do have sentient Kryptonite, I believe, in some form. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Like, the product descriptions implied as such. There's a face on oh, yeah, the freaking Kryptonite, so it looks like it's supposed but, to be this huge. But they, weird. Does Kryptonite come in more colors than green? Yes, it does. Okay. The Kryptonite looks like it's <laughs> so, it's so like connivingly cute. Huh, it's like the Book of Monsters. <laughs> monsters. <laughs> monsters. It's like a Kryptonite. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like okay, so there's green Kryptonite. Green, green Kryptonite. Green Kryptonite ends up um either killing superman or just stealing his powers um and then like uh red does something really weird to superman uh blue only affects like bizarro oh, there's all do. sorts of different kryptonite oh, basically. Okay. blue yes. basically like what it affects no, 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 the no, no, bizarro no, no. superman red one what does it do oh red uh well red will have like any one weird effects on superman like one time it made his like hair and fingernails grow out super long another time it like made him like just like a jerk to everyone. Oh. Uh, one time it turned him into like a, like a monkey, I think. Just like just random stuff. Monkey this is the Silver Age, and they were just like, "Oh, this is Kryptonite. This is like something weird to Superman." Because in the Silver Age, this is every comic. The comic is like, "Oh, Superman's a giant jerk to everyone," and you're like, "What?" And then you read the comics, like, "Oh, Red Kryptonite made me a jerk," or whatever. It's like, "Oh, like yeah, I uh, destroyed your marriage, Lois, because uh, you, you go had, into like, a nerdy cancer. comic book rant every single episode. <laughs> yeah, you really really some, people need, some people need to be She's informed. She's like, "Geez, some people need to be informed. What if they don't want to be informed? Some people don't care. Well, like then you me. Keep, like, <laughs> I not don't listen care. to a podcast. Shut up. Some people Batman are too informed." <laughs> A Batman in the <laughs> I might be too informed now. Well, we're getting a lot of colors. There's yellow, there's green, <laughs> there's purple, there's blue, hey. there's red, purple, there's orange. I, swear. I don't think there's purple kryptonite, actually. <laughs> well, I'm just listing the colors that we have here. Oh, All no, right. I, I mean, sure. Fair enough. All right, Batman in the Phantom Zone. Um, they that's a that was a thing that was like released a while ago. We got caught wind of that and i think like lego kind of was like hey can you 
remove all photos of this from the internet. So we didn't talk about it around then. Now it's been cited. It's in stores. So now I, I believe this you know, is the point where you can talk about it now that it's being sold. Um, the Phantom Zone is a thing in Superman. Uh, I was about to it's say, are we going to learn about it? We are yeah. going to learn about it. <laughs> it's just history lesson time. It's like, it's where they stuff Zod in, basically. It's history lesson time. Long story short, uh, Batman being in the Phantom Zone might be a, a thing in the movie. That might be like a big plot point. Really? Because, because <laughs> the Batman movie polybag implies that Batman will be in the Phantom Zone in the movie? Well, I mean, we've seen <laughs> polybags before. Batman in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> I know, I'm saying that, like, we've seen polybags before that, like, didn't have anything to do with the movie. You know what? Like, no, no, I, he's right. It's like that bionicle, um, oh, what's it, the bionicle scorpion, and, oh, yeah, oh yeah. the hero yeah. factory pack mess up. Yeah, I guess, yeah, polybags can sometimes be a little sketch. Well, I mean, uh, I yeah, know. far be it from bionicle to have little sets that aren't canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it may be the case, but I don't know. So, I mean, I no clue. right, it could have been every way. Uh, this is something that's going to play in the movie. So, you know, I guess I am spoilers, intrigued, but, but yeah. I really have no idea where that's going to go. Well, it's going to hinge on who the villain is, because like if it's just Joker, that's fine. But if there's like if there's someone else pulling the strings some Justice League villain. Maybe they'll pull in the other heroes. I don't know. I got no clue. I don't either. All right. And the last thing is following Lego was Lego's been teasing a VR thing on their page. We actually had a whole thing today where like people <laughs> thought they were teasing Bionicle Generation 3, I guess. They didn't, they, they didn't understand the context they, of one they of their not. Facebook messages. Um, the, and yeah. plot twist. We found about this on our live stream earlier today, yeah. actually. And yeah. to be very, very clear, they are not. They are not. The context is we can't tell you what this reveal is about, so just keep watching. That's the context. Exactly. And so people like uh, someone says, hey, "Is this Bionicle Generation Three? And Lego says, "Well, we can't really say at the moment." Shush. And people are like, "Oh, that's confirmation that they're working in Generation Three. No, it's not. Um, we it really is. We knew yeah. last week. We reported on the uh, Brickheads VR experience that was coming. So. I'm pretty sure that's going to be it. However, Lego has done other things with VR recently, including a promotion with Pentatonix. Pentatonix is a acapella group that has been very popular. Pentatonix? Popu- yeah, Pentatonix. That's, that's, that's right. Oh, that was Pentatonix. It's P-E-N-T-A-T-O-N-I-X. Oh, okay. There's Pentatonix. It is, that's a musical term. There's also, like, Penta means five, and there's five of them. So, they, uh, they did this music video for up on the housetop that featured them like as lego figures riding around in this car and stuff and it's a vr experience so like you can actually like if you look at the youtube video you can like move your camera around and see what they're doing that's um, great it was it's a c- really cool idea for a promotion um i feel like it's really low poly render i, I don't know what the deal is it, but like it is. If you, there's not a lot of the shading's really weird and the shading's just really the thing that bothers like, me is that at, at the very least three of them are using hair pieces that are not actual hair pieces and they look yeah really bizarre <laughs> yeah um be, well because like if you if you follow pentatonics they change their hairstyles like every video it seems like every they kind of like make sure they all change uh their how they look their appearance for something and the latest one the video they posted like a couple days ago they all have beards now except for the you know except for um uh, Kristen, obviously, but like, you know, everyone, and then at, for the Daft Punk video, of course, you know, everyone's kind of oh, yeah. different. So, um, long story short, it is kind of hard to nail like a certain specific hairstyle form, but the ones they do have here look really weird, especially for me is, uh, Kevin's like hairstyle, uh, that kind of looks like it's flat on top, but like at an angle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's really weird. I'm, I'm not sure what they're trying to go with that. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. I like the that video, VR is becoming a thing, though. Right. Like, more commonplace. It, cardboard is the big deal that Google's trying to push with this. Um, cardboard <laughs> is basically, like, legitimately, it's a VR headset made out of cardboard. You just put your phone in, and then you, like, oh, oh, yeah. and you can look around. I feel like so, I was ahead of the curve. Yeah, I know, right? Sure, right? Cardboard masks, you're somewhere ahead I could have just shoved get, my phone in the mask. We should get the LJ VR experience going. <laughs> Talk oh. to LJ in VR. Uh, or man, wear no. the mask sure. in VR. <laughs> I didn't think about that. No. Become the mask. We could do a 360 video at Brick Fair. That would be kind of cool. Let's do Long it. Long story short, though, um, this... What? We had to get a 360 camera. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. More money? Okay. Oh, it, yeah. would be, it would be a fun thing to do, though. 
If we had that I, kind I of budget, if we had that kind of budget, th- it would be Maybe a really cool idea. Let's Patreon. spend all Get the money on all the cameras. <laughs> there, no. Yeah, we'll, we'll buy a 360 <laughs> camera and like take you around Brick Fair with it. Um, I was actually kind of disappointed because they announced a partnership with Lego and I thought, oh, is Lego going to do like a Big Bang Theory style? Like, hey, this is a Pentatonix Lego set that you can get. I would have bought that immediately. Unfortunately, it's just a kind of low quality um, animation. They try to make it look like it's stop motion with like how the characters move, but it just doesn't, 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 <laughs> doesn't work. I don't know. I feel like it could have gone through a, a better thing there. Love Pentatonix, by the way, though. Um, great oh, holiday yeah. music. We've been listening to them. Yeah, I'm watching this music video, and honestly, it's kind of creepy because I'm I'm like watching it with the volume down, so I'm not getting the music or anything because I'm trying to listen to you guys talk. But it's like it's just some really creepy like close up shots to their faces as they like stare into your soul. (laughs) It's like they're like really weird. They're like going back and forth, like leaning side to side, and they're yeah. The animation is just so weirdly uh like jerkish and like unnatural it would have been really cool had to had they gone for like the photorealism of the lego movie you know that would have been a really cool experience to see if like all these things in the background <clears throat> because it's so low poly it just looks really lame honestly like the song's really good it just kind of like and the, the concept is cool but it just looks like something made in 2003 um and so basically it, uh, yeah I, i'm, I'm not really uh, not there. really feeling that no it looks oh, older yeah. than those three but i know what you mean yeah but i mean like <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, well. When does this, uh, <laughs> sure. this podcast go live? What, Var? What day does this podcast go live? It will be going live on Saturday. On Saturday, which yes. means that the first episode of TLDR is out let's, now. Let's yes. talk about... Yay. You want to talk about this? You talk about it. The new show. Go Chicago, for it. TLDR. Enlighten us. Uh, I wasn't really going to... I was just going to say, hey, you should go check that out because the show... Oh, it's it's a lot of, I mean, a lot pitch, of it, pitch it to people who are, uh, who are discussing this podcast. <clears throat> um... Well, I guess the best way to pitch it is kind of like how it actually came to be was, uh, we were all like sync watching Ninjago or whatever. And, um, then another cast member of ours was kind of out and about doing things. And then he kind of came in like halfway through the episode. So, uh, he's like, so what's going on right now? And I just kind of explained it to him in this like really like stupid, quick, non serious way that was just like the, it was the dumbest thing ever, <laughs> but it was really funny, and we were like, we should make that a show. Right. <laughs> so that's basically how that happened. Um, we have TLDR, which is basically um sort of a recapping of uh, Ninjago, told with a uh, severe lack of research and <laughs> a definite <laughs> citation needed as far as uh, how everything is being told. And it's very sarcastic and... It's yeah, it's a, yeah it's, it's a great like it's a great a recap it. it's kind of a great review you might say oh my gosh that it is <laughs> i'm kidding oh, <laughs> shut up actually one thing i do appreciate um say about it. this show is that uh at the <laughs> end like you do it's not just completely irreverent like we do like the show ninjago and so like i, I feel like there are there is a thing where like some people might think that you're hating on the show or trying to make fun of it like in a oh, negative yeah, no. way. But nope. stick through the end, watch the especially watch the last couple minutes, and then you'll you'll kind of get a feel for what Var is really trying to convey with the show. So yeah, yeah. I love it but to yeah. death, and I hope people are gonna have a fun time with it. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to see more content from us, you should totally you know subscribe to this channel. We got a lot more stuff coming for you. Uh, we also have some more uh, exclusive stuff over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the TTV channel. We actually added a ton of new things. We've been talking about it for a while, like how we have all these new perks. They went live just earlier this week, just a couple of days ago, actually, from this recording. Um, so that's all there for you to guys to like kind of you know pick through one of the great things about this patron is that we have made it so like you can kind of pick the level that you want to be at you have a lot of options when it comes to supporting us and there's exactly. a lot of cool stuff coming with this uh we do think you all you guys are going to uh to like what we got in store for you guys um you know hopefully we get some more um some more uh like sets and stuff going forward so uh we got more rewards for everything like you can get you can actually be like a sponsor of this uh this channel and some of the videos uh for one of those rewards which we actually do can... have a sponsor we do have one we have one yeah surprisingly so that was quick i did not expect I did anyone not, to yeah, go, right. go for that it, they really soon. uh really jumped on that so i'm do, really looking forward to showing no we d- um we do i uh, it's just it's on my phone i have to look at it because i'm not yeah i forget it. right it's now. like alvira or something like that but I mean, thanks to everyone who donates. Every little donation counts. Um, yeah. But we, I will admire 
large and small ones. I'm quite excited for this entire initiative, and it is the the support's been overwhelming. We're looking to build going forward because in the wake of Vessel going away, this will be a huge help to all of us being able to continue doing this to the level that we have always done it, and hopefully exceed that level and improve our quality, it and is. improve our production, and do all sorts of awesome stuff. So I'm hoping our sponsor for today's episode, our lovely patron here, is Alvaro Alvarado. Very very nice. Oh wow. Hmm. There you go, buddy. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for uh, donating over to our Patreon. Yes. <laughs> you are awesome. <laughs> if you want to hear more about the results of the first week of Patreon, you can check out the next episode of the TDV Podcast, where I'm sure we'll be discussing it. If you want to hear all about the new perks, go watch the last episode of the TDV right. Podcast. <laughs> so it all works out. And uh, Alvar is the one who who is our first like sponsor-level uh, donor. So just in case, you know, it's not just a random guy, that's the person we're looking for. Shout out yes. to you. And uh, we'll be talking more about this in a future episode. So thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Quite the right. All right, guys. I think it's about time to wrap up unless anyone has some last minute things. Um, as always, you can catch the uh, Brickfeed podcast here on Saturdays, the TTV podcast here on Mondays. We have basically new videos almost every day, if not every day, generally here on this channel. So make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see some more stuff from us. Also, uh, we'll s- I, I do have one thing I'd like to add, okay. if that's okay. Go for do it. it. Uh, first of all, if you did make it to this point, Type bricks in the comments. I'm, I'm interested in that. And second, let us know what you want to see. We're always taking suggestions, always taking feedback, con- uh, criticism, constructive, mm-hmm. of course. So let us know what you want to see on this podcast, other podcasts, or on the channel in general. We are listening. Especially considering the current state of things. Everything's up in the air. We could use all the right. feedback we can I'm get. I'm not listening. We're, we're <laughs> trying a lot of new stuff. <laughs> I'm not listening. I swear. <laughs> Okay, so some of us are listening, but we'll hear you. <laughs> the people that matter will hear you, except for Var, who matters, but is not going to hear you, apparently. Nice. Alright, yeah. thanks. You will be silenced. How dare you talk to me? Thanks for tuning in and uh, seeing this episode, guys. We hope to see you next week uh, on the next episode of the TTV Brickfeed Podcast. I'm Jonathan. I'm Varderan. I'm Meso. I'm LJ. And I'm Purple. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Farewell. Bye. Bye. Bye.